Okay, so um, so we were uh, so before last week we were um, doing this chuva of our Bilsky Hoffman, and um, and uh, it was on uh, the question of using an organ, and somebody had written to him. It was eighteen ninety seven, Muhammad Lahoa, and somebody had written to him and said, uh, you know, I'm a rabbi in. Um, And um, he says, um, says if I don't give them, he says they want an organ. And if I don't give them an organ, they're going to get rid of me and they'll hire a more liberal rabbi. He said, so the question is, can we draw a distinction between Shabbos and weekday with regard to the organ? And um, I actually would like to figure out what the because it does make a difference. Now, but that's what happened, of course, is in, um, he's in, in Germany, takes over here for uh, Rabbi Hilden's home here. Maybe this is Germany, right? So it's interesting. In other words, wouldn't we say that you're either reform or you're orthodox? Right? Now, if you're a form, you can have an organ for orthodox, you're not going to, but, and, and this is a little late, you know, there's already a lot of division between them, especially in Germany. So that's why I'm wondering, maybe it's not Germany, maybe this is Hungary, because <laughs> there the lines were, were more blurry. Um, you know, in, in Germany, you had the reform movement, um, but in, in Hungary, you had the neologue movement, which was, it was not really reform. It was more like early conservative in the United States where they wanted to do things that were not necessarily against halacha, but things that violated, um, you know, the, having the sermon in the vernacular, moving bima, those kinds of things. But they weren't necessarily, they, I don't think they wanted an organ, certainly not on Shabbos. So, um, whereas I would think by the late 1800s, somebody wants an organ on Shabbos in Germany, it's reform. Uh, now, admittedly, in the 19th century, it's a little harder to draw these distinctions. But, um, but uh, so I'll, I'll try and figure out if we can know what, who he's writing then. He doesn't really say the name of the rabbi who writes it. So he wrote about, uh, he wrote basically three different opinions. He said, um, uh, just to review, he had said that uh, in Hamburg, when this first started happening, <coughs> so the Besden of Hamburg issued a, a, a uh, which we saw, they issued a, um, a whole book, really, of letters, and, and that was that was early. That was eighteen nineteen. And they basically said you can't use it on Shabbos. Um, now, what, why didn't they say you can't use it on weekday? I mean, reform had just started, so so they were probably responding halachically. Um, and then, of course, there's uh, other opinions that um, um, that said you can't use it on Shabbos. Now they didn't say anything about. Day. And then uh, there were those who forbid it on Shabbos and weekday, and there were those who said uh, you can't use it on Shabbos, but you can use it on a weekday. For instance, in Prague, we know they did use it on a weekday. That, that's somehow everybody goes back to Prague. That seems to be the one place where they used it on a weekday in Orthodox synagogue. Um, and uh, of course, there are those who forbade both, and there's a very long list of who that is. I'm so far. Do we have any idea how long they use it in Prague? I mean, did this try it out a few times and take it away? I mean, maybe Prague decided no. to stop using it after a while. I mean, said it was a yeah, bad idea. Well, that's a good question. I mean, even more important than that is when did they start? Now, as if they started, you know, in, in the early 1700s, 
then that's not about reform. That's about, you know, that's about aesthetics, uh, which changes the game. Um, now, we did see a tshuva in which they talked about a certain rabbi in Prague who did have an organ, and I thought that it was very early. Uh, that's, that's what I remember from that visit. I have to find it. So we could figure out when he when he did. But that's a good question. When did they uh, I'll see if I can figure it out when when they started using the organ in it sounds like it was something more regular. It doesn't sound like it was, you know, a one-time thing. Uh, from this chuba and from other chuba, it sounds like something kind of regular. Um, the question is again, though, when did they start? Because they started before the reform movement, you know, 1700s. Then I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, you could say it's an imitation of non-Jew, but before there's a reform movement, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, and then. Uh, and there's then he quotes uh, a bunch of folks who say that you know, a bunch of rabbis, a bunch of folks give a, a number, a larger number, that they can't use it on Shabbos before the reform. And then he says, in um, the year uh, 18, um, 18, 1863, uh, the great rabbi, Rabbi Deitch, the Av Bezdin of Hario, uh, this, um, but he wrote a uh, he wrote a letter a book, um, and then he says in Yiddish here the argal the the organ in there in there zogin you can't use it. And he tells you why it's forbidden. In, in, on all the sides. And he says that you can't use it on a weekday either. Why? Because of Chukotayim, because the non Jews use it, and you're not allowed to walk in their ways. And um, there also he brings the opinion of um, uh, Rabbi Rosenstein and others who say that it's forbidden. That's from the year Kavrish Chavetz, which is 1882. Um, okay, and then he says, "La Havdu Ben Chaim and to separate between those who are alive and those who are not alive." The great Rabbi Rabbi Zalman Khan, um, who seems to be alive at this time, was writing in the late in the 1820s. Levar Isra Argo Betuv Tam Vidasi. He explains why it's forbidden to have an organ, um, and uh, it's another source for this. Uh, from 1865. And they both said that it's forbidden on weekday and on Shabbos. This is interesting. So he says, And so it is written in our, uh, you know, information, which we give to every student, right? Every rabbinical student in our yeshiva. What's that? That is the Hildesheim yeshiva in Berlin. Notes when we give them their smicha. This is interesting, right? It sounds like when they give them their smicha, they also give them a warning. Don't use an organ. That's what it sounds like. And why they give them a, a paper or a book or something about why it's forbidden to use an organ uh, because of walking in the way of non-Jew, which would make it forbidden even on a week. That's very interesting. And that's what they give them with their smicha. So huh. from, the, from, from the fact that they would emphasize that, it means yeah. that, the, that clearly there's, they, don't, they, they agree that there's no halachic right. prohibition on it. 
Right. right? But this is you, it, this is what separates the from from the not. Uh-huh. And that, that's, that's that's what it sounds like. It, it seems very similar to something Rabbi Linzer told. Rabbi Linzer is the head of Yeshiva Chovei Torah. And, um, you know, th- th- there's a lot of, th- there's a big argument about cheese in, 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 in the North, in, there used to be a big argument about cheese in the Orthodox world. You need non-kosher cheese. There's cheese that has kosher ingredients, but um, there was a rabbinic decree in the time of the Talmud that you should not, because cheese was always made by putting it into a non-kosher stomach of an animal, of a, of a treif animal, that's how you have to make cheese. You take a stomach out and put the milk in so it would curdle, or you had to actually, when you opened up an animal, uh, you opened up a, a young animal and there was milk that it had drunk in the stomach and that would have curdled. Because right, they didn't know how to take out the rennet. Um, and then they learned how to take out rennet, sort of dry it and process it. And the question was, is that still you know part of the animal or not? Um, and, um, and very famously, Rabbi Soloveitchik was known for eating cheese that, I don't know what it was like in Boston, uh, did other people, the only answer you would probably know, but um, did people eat, I mean, they say that Rabbi Soloveitchik ate cheese, that the ingredients are kosher, but. They, they, they say that he, that he, that he uh, permitted no, uh, sort of standard cheese, but that was earlier. By the time I remember in the late 60s, he no longer, Oh, had that opinion or, or publicized the opinion or was known to do that. So if, right. it, if it's true, it was, it was earlier and he changed. Right. It was American cheese, I think. Right. Well, but it was cheese that used rent. Uh, and, and there's a lot of halachic basis for that, but we, it's not something we do. In the Orthodox community, because there's kosher cheese available and, 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 it's, and, and because Ramosavich's opinion really relies on it, one opinion in a toast. It's not that there isn't an opinion, but it's not the majority opinion. Um, now, probably when he was doing it, it was early on. He felt there was halakhic grounds for it. And there probably was very little kosher cheese in America. Um, and um, so it's not that you can't make a halakhic argument for it. You, you can, obviously. And Rabbi Salvechik famously was known to have eaten it. So, so, you know, so on the one hand, you sort of say to yourself, well, why can't we eat it? What's the big deal? But it's almost like even if you held halakhically, it's okay. It's become what sort of separates today, like the punctilious about kashrut and the not so punctilious, right? So it's, it's not really, it's not, it's, so, so it's interesting. Rabbi Lidzer is that of Chovei Torah. He said, he said, um, he said, I tell my students when we give them smicha, I say to them, don't be one of those rabbis that uses non-kosher cheese. <laughs> And I thought to myself, that's what you tell them? What do you mean that's what you tell them? That's what's important? That's what, you, that's, that's what you want them to know when they go out into the world to be a rabbi? So it's not because that's the most important thing. It's not because there's no halachic argument for eating non kosher cheese. It's because that's what, that's at this moment, right? He thought that's, he felt that's what separates the sort of orthodox on, you know, on one side of the spectrum and the orthodox on the other side of the spectrum, right? This is a very, you know, it's a very specific so it, it must be that, you know, in the 1890s, using an organ on the weekday is, you know, what separates them. Maybe the neologan hungi used the organ on the weekday, I don't know, but it's, it's obviously what, what within the Orthodox community, what kind of separates those who are, you know, and, and we're not talking about Haredim. Haredim a million years aren't going to use an organ on a weekday, right? The Chassam Sofer never would have permitted that um, because it smacks of, of, of something non-Jewish. So what are we talking about? We're talking about within the sort of open-minded, you know, within the within the Torim Derech Eretz community, right? Within the Hershian or or Hildesheimer world, there's obviously a very, um, you know, there's a very there's a narrow split between um, between those who use an organ and the weekend and those who won't. That, that that's what it sounds like. Sounds comparable. Um, you know, which is at this moment, right? In 10 years or 20 years, that's not going to be the issue. Uh, we give it to them with their smicha. Uh, we tell them, don't use an organ. And that's on Shabbos or a Shabbos or weekday. There's nothing to do with Shabbos. That has to do with walking in the way of the non Right? Now, I mean, go back to the Mahari. Does it really have to get through the non In other words, what if they wanted to use a guitar at this time? Would that be different? Now, they, they, they didn't want to use a guitar because... 
guitar wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't German, it wasn't formal, but may, maybe they would have had no problem with the guitar in a week. Henry T. the Rabbi Gomer of Shimon Rafal Hirsch, right? And he says, and so I saw, written by Rabbi Shamshin Rafal Hirsch. I remember Shamshin Rafal Hirsch has a robe, he has a choir, um, but he does not have an organ. So that's very interesting at where you make these splits. The Perusho live Ayikra, he wrote it in his commentary on Ayikra, that you can't have an organ because of walking in their ways, whether on Shabbos or on a weekday. Maritz Chias writes this, another, another posseg uh, in Minchas Kenos. And that might be interesting to see. A book called Minchas Kenos has to be a, a book of. Um, so this refers to a Minchas Knos is a is a it literally means a a um, grain offering of zealotry, and um, it's the offering that was brought when there's a sot there's a woman who's accused of being unfaithful, she has to bring a Minchas Knos a, a a grain offering of 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 of, of, of not um, of uh, yeah, of kina, you know, of um, uh, jealousy. Minchas I mean, you know, of jealousy, not zealous, jealousy. So, um, but it can also mean a kanoi, is zealous, to be like a zealot, like Minchas. So usually when books are called something like this, it means it's a, um, it's a, it's really coming with one topic to be a, um, an argument against something. Um, okay, and he writes that uh, you can't use an argoa, so we'll have to look that up for because that's obviously a, a book that's uh, that's written on a specific topic to be an argument against a flip. Because of the argoa, yesh the table of it, and he writes that that indeed it's a problem playing an organ because it's walking in ways, um, as the Rambam says in the laws of Ovadazara. If you have something that is specifically used for idolatry, uh, then you're not allowed to use that. Now, that's interesting because the robes, where the robes come from, right? You could argue that the robes are something that uh, a, law, you know, a, a lawyer probably wore at the time or a judge wears. Maybe that's a choir. I mean, where they get that? Now, you could say, well, what do you mean? Like, just because the non Jews use the choir, I think all choirs. And that's where you draw the line here is very hard because, you know, so again, it must be that in the 1890s in Germany, an organ means something different than a choir, it's different than a guitar. is a book called The War of God that's written in Hanover by this Rabbi Zutra. This is uh, 1836. He says he can't use it on Shabbos. He doesn't say he can't use it on a week. Now, you could see why they would, it would change over time. But early on, it's a halachic question. Um, but then over time, as the reform becomes more known, right? 1936 is only one reform synagogue in Hamburg. Um, you know, once reform becomes more popular, so then, so are they responding to Christianity here? They're responding to reform. Now, had there been no reform movement, would they have said, this is too much like the non -Jew? Or, or, or no, it's, it's really because the reform are doing it to be like the non-Jewish um, uh, formalities. That's really why it becomes a problem. Um, and then he says, we're going to, so he says, in my tshuva now, I've sort of set out what there is to say on all the different sides. So now I'm going to tell you what I think. Um, yadam, those who permit it have strength in their hands. Um, and what have they said? They've said that in the temple, there was or there was instruments that were similar to an organ. See, that's interesting. It's not an instrument; it's an organ. organ and they say there's an organ in Prague, and therefore he says, okay, therefore we got to examine. And so then he's getting into. So I'll try and figure out when when this uh, organ came into. These are two 
obvious names for books that are polemic. I mean, in every generation, whether it's Sabatian issues or whatever it is, Mohemes Hashem and Nunchas Kanoas is the name for a, 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 uh, a polemical book. Because <laughs> one is the war of God and one is uh, uh, you know, the sacrifice of jealousy, of zealotry. Okay, have a good day. Uh, okay. Thanks, Rabbi. Thank, Thank you. How are you, fe- how are you feeling? Thank God. No, I'm feeling a lot better. So, good. Um, good. You know, it wasn't too bad. It absolutely gone. I mean, at least the symptoms are all gone. And CDC seems to feel better. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well. Tell well.